Come now, my love. Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there can fade so fast? And be like for want of rain, which I could well between us from the tempest of my eyes. I for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or by history. The course of true love never did run smooth, but either it was different in blood. Or cross, too high to be enthralled to low. Or else misgraft in respect of years. Spite, too old to be engaged to young. Or merit stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. Or if there were sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege unto it, making his momentaries a sound swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief as the lightning in the colleague night, that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath the power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. And we must teach our child patience, for it is a customary crosses due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. Good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote, seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena to do observance to a morn of May, there I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which knitteth souls and prospers loves, and by that fire which burned the Carthage queen when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke, in that same place that thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised love. Look, here's Helena. Come speed, fair Helena, whither away? Call you me fair? That fair again say. Demetrius loves your fair, oh happy fair. Your eyes are load stars, and your tongue's sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear, when wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear. Oh, sickness is catching, oh, were favor so, yours would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. My ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I'll give to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what heart you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smiles such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate him, the more he follows me. The more I love him, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself shall fly this place. Before a time I did my Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then, to what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned my heaven into a hell. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearls the bladed grass, a time when lovers' flights do still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And then in that wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight for lovers' food till morrow, deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helen, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. How happy some, or other some, can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all that he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities. Things base and vile, holy, no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. <sighs> love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste. And therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled. 
As waggish boys in game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. But when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolves, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. <laughs>